So um, welcome to the uh, to the second talk for today, um, excluding the um, keynote, of course. So it's the third talk for today. Um, our speaker is uh, Benoit, who's the um, who's a works as tech lead for Grab One. Is yeah. that correct? Um, and he's going to talk about um, Python and using Elasticsearch in Python. And um, I'll just hand it over to him. So um, hello everyone. Well, is it okay? This on? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we've started um, around a year and a half ago at Grab One uh, to move from um, our legacy code base, which was in PHP, uh, search was using, using like lots of people, uh, percent like percent. Uh, we had more and more data in our database. Uh, users are more and more used to search like Google. So they type something. There is spelling correction. Uh, it's just giving you what you need. Uh, and they're not used to like old way of searching where you have to be exact with your syntax. Uh, we started to have performance issues as well on the website because Graben is quite popular in New Zealand and uh, was still growing. We had more and more deals. It was slower and slower. So that's basically how our search was looking like before which is really nice uh, when you look at it, but it's not really working, it's not really scalable. So a year and a half ago, we started to use Elasticsearch, which was <laughs> just released 1.0 when we started. Um, so what is Elasticsearch? Elasticsearch is a JSON document-oriented uh, data store. You just store JSON with a REST API. It's really simple. You just Called the API, you have your JSON, you call another API, and you, it returns your JSON. It is near real time, meaning that it's the indexing is not instant. So it's taking a few milliseconds up to half a second to index your documents. So you don't want to use this for transactions. You want to use this really for search. By design, it's clustered. You can have multiple nodes. You can spawn them, uh, do replication. Um, it's really, really easy to install. And it's uh, open source, written in Java, and really active. So just basic tutorial how to install it. Just install Java, go on the website, you unzip, <coughs> and you s launch the bin. That's finished. So that's really simple. If you want to test it on your computer, you can do it at lunchtime. You'll see it's really, really easy. Um, so Python e e ecosystem around Elasticsearch. So the official low-level library uh, written in Python and using the HTTP interface. And more interesting for us, because we're using it, the high-level library, which is a query DSL helper, so helps you to write queries a bit like a Django model query. Uh, there is a simple ORM that allows you to save and uh, read and save objects in your database. We use Django, so I wrote a year ago this module for Django debug, debug toolbar, which is exactly the same kind of things than the SQL debug, debug toolbar, but for Elasticsearch. And there is this uh, awesome uh, command line cluster management for Elasticsearch that is written in Python as well and is maintained by uh, Elasticsearch. Practical grid. How do you in take something and insert it in Elasticsearch with Python. So that's, what, eight lines of code, uh, reading a one million line CSV, and uh, inserting it in Elasticsearch. There is no, no more than this, because Elasticsearch use um, inferred data, data type by default. If something looks like a date, it will save it as a date. If something looks like a number, it will save it as a number. If something looks like text, it will just do a full text search on it. So it's really easy by default. That's why the learning curve is really in at the start, then comes higher when you try to do more complex things. Uh, in Python, how would you do a search for a document? So first, if you want to just get a document by ID, it's just pretty simple. If you want to do a more complex search, you can use this library that will transform this into their query DSL, which is JSON, and you get your documents. So this is basically the JSON that is returned by Elasticsearch for each of your query. So you have a bit of metadata at the, uh, the top, how long it took, uh, how many shards were used. So a shard is just a place where you store your documents, how many hits 
you get from your search. In this case, we have two of them. What is the max score, which is an important feature of Elasticsearch. By default, everything is scored. So if, this, if your text is matching more documents, then the score will be higher in this document. If you have uh, words that are more important for the cluster, the score will be higher as well. And then you'll get your documents, your list of documents, in index, type, the ID, uh, the score, and then the source of your document, which is exactly the JSON document you sent it to, to Elasticsearch. So the, our first challenge was how can we connect our MySQL legacy database, our legacy PHP code, into Elasticsearch? So there are many ways to do it. I've, I'm highlighting four of them, uh, most simple to most complex ones, and we're using the last one at the moment. So you can have just a CSV you generate every day uh, by your application. You import it in Elasticsearch with the eight lines I showed you. It's working. It's only working, of course, if you don't need real time. And, but if you're indexing uh, books and you just do, it, do them overnight, then there is no issue. You can have the same kind of thing, but with a cron job. Every minute, you read your database. You're like, hey, something's changed. Yes. Uh, OK, I'm serializing them and setting the Elasticsearch. Then you have just one minute. You are just one minute behind your main database, which is probably for most people enough. Even for us at Guaban, uh, one minute after could be OK. Just sold out will be a bit weird, uh, because you'll click on it and say, ah, it's not sold out. And then one minute later, it's sold out. But this is happening all the time on e e-commerce e website, so it won't really be a problem. Then you can have a database queue using triggers with on-road change, for example. You create a queue, and instantly you read this queue every second, and now you're just one second behind your cluster. Or in our case, in PHP, we added a post-save hook. You can do exactly the same thing in Django. And this is posting to RabbitMQ, and then we have a consumer that is reading from RabbitMQ and indexing it in Elasticsearch. So important things, it's Elasticsearch and JSON document store in general are not uh, SQL. So you need to think completely differently. You need to duplicate your data, which is really weird when you come from a SQL word. So if, you, if we do these documents, it's just boots and sneakers, but we, are, we have a merchant sub-document inside the document, and we are going to repeat his name, repeat his location. This is really important to repeat everything, because then you can do aggregations on name, aggregation on the clustering. But you need each document to contain all info you're going to search on or uh, group by. At the end, you don't have so many fields you need to display to your end user, because you're going to use Elasticsearch for your end users, not for your main data store. You need name descriptions some basic info, just look at your website, look at what's displayed, and you'll see that it's not that many fields at the end. Elasticsearch uh, versus SQL, because I'm, everybody's always asking me, so what, how is it different? What, how is it working? Uh, simple query, uh, select star from uh, an index uh, with um, basic pagination. You'll have size from, and you have a limit 25-25 in SQL. You have an order by name. You have a comma order by name. It's pretty similar. It's just JSON. Um, but where I found that Elasticsearch is really shining is, by default, even with Django, if you want just to have the number total of results of uh, your search, it's going to, to do a count star, because there is no way to count your um, documents without doing a second query in SQL. You cannot retrieve 10 documents and count everything at the same time. So Elasticsearch has these uh, aggregations that are used more and more at the moment with uh, what's called the ELTK stack, which is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Uh, it's basically log aggregations and doing um, aggregations on log, finding graphs and things with maps. It's using the exact same technology. So if you look at GitHub, for example, this page is fairly complex. Uh, you have heaps of stuff on the left. You have a total. You have a full text search. You have a list of results with a number of stars. You have pagination at the bottom. Um, 
this page can be done with one query in Elasticsearch. Uh, it's taking, in our use case, around 10 milliseconds to return a page that is that complex. For GitHub, it's a bit longer because they have more documents. And yes, this page is powered by Elasticsearch on GitHub. So if we take a closer look at it, you have two different aggregations at the same time, repository and languages. You have the order by, you have the total of results, and you have the list view as well. At the bottom, you have pagination. So I was somehow inspired by this page and say, hey, we need to do something like this at Graban, being able to search everything, but just with less IO that one we have, which was probably around 1,000 1, SQL queries to display a page. So what type of aggregations can you do in Elasticsearch? Terms aggregation means, for example, if you want to ag aggregate per category, you'll have the category name and you'll have the list of categories um, ordered by the number. Uh, statistics on anything, price bucket, uh, time-based histograms, geo distance, uh, geo hash grid. I'm going to highlight a few of them just so you can understand how, it is, how easy it is in Python to create those aggregations and display them. So if we take the date histogram, the query would be simply uh, ags, which is the keyword for, say, I want to do an aggregation. Then you give a name, then you say it's a date histogram. I want my field called date, I want an interval of one month, and I want the output format to be with uh, year, year, month, month, day, day. And the result on the right is showing you a list of buckets, and in those buckets you have the key as a string, you have the key which is the real timestamp, and then you have how many documents are matching. Then you, with the Elasticsearch uh, library, uh, in Python, you just have a normal Python object at the end. You can just iterate through it and display it to the user. More interesting, because it's really more difficult to do with SQL Word, is the geodistance aggregation. Um, I want to know all restaurants that are one kilometer from me, five kilometers, and 100 kilometers from, from me. Um, it's the same kind of aggregation than the date histogram, but based on locations, and it's out of the box with Elasticsearch. You can easily draw circles, find how many things are near you or far away. And then the one we're using that is even more interesting is the GeoHash, which is doing clustering of points, a bit like Google is doing on uh, Google Maps, when you have multiple points, they group them together, and they say three in this area. This is also by default using GeoHash, which is a standard industry for the clustering things on low precision um, uh, geo. So here's our map with our deals. You can see Christchurch. Uh, if there is only one deal matching in the area, it's just going to display it. Uh, if we have like five of them at the, same, at the same place, then it will just, for us, draw a circle, say five of them. If you click on it, it's going to zoom in uh, because the zoom level will be lower, then it's probably not going to cluster it and it's going to display them. Uh, on the left, I put our timings at the moment, which, is, which are around 15, seven, 17 milliseconds to, uh, per query. So it's really fast. It's not costly for our servers. Full text search. Uh, what do you have out of the box with Elasticsearch and uh, put it on your website? So you, have, uh, you can search multiple fields at the same time. Uh, you can do spelling mistakes. I've put an example with restaurant, and uh, this is just finding words that are more, more common and closer to this one. You can use synonyms. You can have did you mean autocomplete. And you can also have something that is more like this, which is show me products that are similar to this one, but different. Uh, I put the code that is actually doing this more like this on Gabon, and it's 80 lines which is pretty simple. But what it's doing under the hood is really interesting. It's taking the price point, doing a ghost uh, reduction around it. It's uh, sh looking at the text of the document on each document, looking at how many words are common in those documents. And I had like a pizza deal, and I can see four other pizza that are around the same price. The configuration is really pretty minimal to have a result like this. If you tune it, you can have a really powerful, did you uh, more like this search. 
we started with just search, and then suddenly we realized why are we, why are we still using SQL for our website for our end users? Uh, we don't need this anymore. We can display list views. We can display products. We can display everything. So recently, we switched uh, to full Elasticsearch for the entire front end. Uh, we don't use uh, MySQL anymore for the back end. Only if you're logged in, uh, then the session is a Django session with no more Django. But all pages are just displaying uh, Elasticsearch results. So this data store, we also in this data store, we also save CMS pages, so like static pages uh, of the website, uh, because at the end it's just another type of document. So the static pages are just normal documents, like any other one. So I talked a bit about the learning curve before. Um, when I started to play with Elasticsearch, I was like amazed at how easy it was. Uh, I could do things like the CSV example in five lines. And of course, it's becoming more and more harder as you go, because you have to learn a lot of how about full text search, how it works uh, under the hood, how the IF, IDF um, ranking is working. Uh, you have to dig into it. But it's easy to get started. I uh, find it really interesting. Um, you can prototype something probably for your website in a few hours. Uh, I'd love to run one day maybe a sort of hackathon around this uh, with Python and Elasticsearch and bring your data and we'll try to do something out of it. So in conclusion, I'd say just, just do it. Try it. Uh, you'll find a use case probably for your company or for yourself. Um, keep your prototype really self-contained and try not to put it inside uh, your main application because we switch from a big monolithic application and now that we have our front end ideas separated from the back end, it's really easy for us to just bring new features without breaking uh, legacy things. Uh, it's more than search. Uh, like I said, it's our entire front end database for, at the moment. Uh, we had nearly no major issue. Uh, in a year and a half with it. The only one we had was a disk full issue that uh, went badly, uh, but it's a bit our fault. Um, and you can, you still need MySQL because remember that it's near real time, that you don't have transactions. It's, there is no acidity. It's just pure documents. It's immutable. Uh, you need the behind the scene your backend with uh, a SQL database, but you can easily push this for your user with uh, Elasticsearch. So I have some interesting links here. Uh, I'm sure you have lots of questions because you can already see some use case. Uh, I'll be happy uh, also if some others are interested uh, to try to create a Elasticsearch user group at some point uh, in Auckland, not Christchurch. Um, so if you are interested with this, uh, come talk to me uh, later, and we'll see if we can do something. Thank you, Benoit. <laughs> so I'm sure, um, I'm sure this talk will spark a lot of uh, interesting questions, and I'm pretty sure most of you will have some use case um, for Elasticsearch. So, um, Please, any questions? Do you know if it's at all feasible to use it as a component in a, a desktop client-side application? Um, I'd say if your client is in Java, yes, because uh, it's Java-based. You could potentially install it if you, if, even if you use Python and your clients have Java on their machine, um, installing it, there is no install. It's just uh, a binary to run, so a jar to run. So yes, definitely you could potentially ship it with your program, uh, run it behind the scene using Python to run the binary, and it's just running. Um, it's using under the hood Lucene uh, index indexes, uh, which is used by Sola as well. And for example, an ID like PyCharm, 
is using this under the hood to do the search uh, on PyCharm. So because, but it's fully Java. It's easier for them because they just interface with Java. Hello. Um, have you, did you, when you were thinking about switching to Elasticsearch, should you consider Postgres as opposed to MySQL? Considering Postgres has full text support as well, text search support, as well as PostGIS for doing the GIS style queries. So I've used uh, Postgres, PostGIS, PostGIS uh, when I was working at Yellow uh, <laughs> to do this, the same kind of things. And I switched to Elasticsearch because uh, first it's faster for millions or billions of documents in Postgres. It's just not fast enough because it's not uh, distributed. You can have around, I think GitHub has uh, more than 500 nodes, so 500 servers with Elasticsearch clustered. Then you can really do aggregations on those 500. Uh, with Postgres, you'll have an issue with this. The full text search, yeah, it's kind of the same, but then you have more features. It's easier to interface because it's JSON, so it's working everywhere. But I started with Postgres, and it's definitely a good for starting, uh, Elasticsearch is more powerful. Um, it was a good talk, thanks. Um, when you were listing out the ways that you were doing the updates, w did you say that you'd sort of essentially moved through those and you'd settled on the last one where you're doing a, using a Django hook? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Could I get those? Uh, this, this one? Uh, so yeah, we are using the last one uh, in PHP and Python. So we still have a part of our backend that is in PHP. So it's a Symfony uh, backend. And there is the same thing that post, post uh, save hook. So we are s when we save anything, we are serializing it and pushing it to RabbitMQ. Right. And then we have our front end, which is just a Django application with a consumer that is listening to the queue, indexing documents all the time as they come in. Uh, at the moment, we have two backend systems, one in PHP, one in Python. So we need a way for them to talk to the front end. And uh, RabbitMQ, with both of them sending documents, is a good, easy way for us. Right. OK, good, thanks. And the other question was, uh, when you first used it, did you, um, did you use a book? Did you have a, make use of a book which you would recommend? Uh, no, but not when I started. But I can recommend one now, uh, which is the official um, Elasticsearch book. I don't remember the name, but it's on their website. Uh, it's an ebook and a physical book as well. Uh, I'm not sure the physical book is released yet. Uh, it's probably in the next uh, few months that it's supposed to be released. And I read it. It's it, it's a it's a massive one, uh, but it's uh, it's really good. I I was a bit in the dark when I started because it was still 0.9 when I started. Uh, 1.0 came, drew a lot of at attention at it. So now it's way better to find documentation and being helped. And this book is good. Hey, Benoit. Uh, so you said that you started um, off with MySQL and then you moved to Elasticsearch. You're no longer using MySQL. Yeah. Uh, are you still the using the, the source data? So is, is that MySQL still your source of truth for your data or not? This is correct. Uh, MySQL is our source of truth, but we're not exposing it to our users. It's only our admin people or salespeople that are entering deals on the website that are using a website powered by MySQL. But the front end itself, when you search or look at deals, which is not true for cart, for example, cart and transactions on the websites are still happening with a transactional database. We don't, we're not using <laughs> Elasticsearch for transactional things because there is no transaction, so it's a bit hard to roll back if you have an issue. Mm -hmm. But the entire front end, you don't need most of the time a SQL database. You can just use JSON document store. And uh, how do you back up your Elasticsearch indexes? Is, is, is there any yeah, that's formal a, way of doing it? So that's a very good question. Uh, there is an awesome uh, built-in snapshots uh, restore feature where you can just run from um, REST API, please back up my Elasticsearch to this path. And then you'll have a backup. And then from any other cluster, you can say, please restore from this uh, cluster using REST API. So yeah, it's built in. Uh, we are using it. We are also, I've restored on my uh, computer, dev computer, uh, the production cluster. And it's coming back uh, from prod directly. And I have a local cluster that is exactly like fraud. 
So um, how would you compare it to something like sol solar? Um, it's really similar because uh, under the road they're using Lucin, so it's same speed, uh, same kind of features. The difference is uh, solar is pretty rigid, and that's exactly why uh, the guy that created Elasticsearch called it Elasticsearch, uh, because so he found solar really rigid, uh, and said, oh, I'm going to call it Elasticsearch because it's uh, less rigid than solar. I said that it's uh, way easier to get started with Elasticsearch than solar. You can do right, really good things with solar, uh, but you, know, you need to know what you're going to do. With Elasticsearch, you can figure out as you go. We still have time for a couple more questions. Um, even if they're really complicated, I'm pretty sure Benoit is happy to answer them. If there are no questions, um, please join me in thanking Benoit again.